Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to the Glitched Out Gaming Podcast, your weekly dose of gaming goodness. And on this episode, we've got a shit ton of stuff to talk about. Well, not really, but we got a few things. <laughs> and, uh, well, we won't be touching on Destiny 2 or the reveal of Kanye West's game or, you know, the obvious fact that Infinity Ward is going to put out a Call of Duty this year. Who saw that coming? But anyways, we do have stuff to talk about, and joining me, as per always, the one, the only, Israel Pacheco. Yes, we can finally talk about stuff after all the technical issues yeah. <laughs> that we've been dealing with for like the last half an hour. Took a ride on that kind of funny garbage truck on fire there for a few minutes. Yeah, it was, really, because, what was it, our first Skype wasn't wasn't mm -hmm. <laughs> dealing with us no i Would tried to call not... you you try to call me and nothing no none of that then when we finally got that working my mic decided hey i'm not going to work plug me in and out about 500 times first i know it's valentine's day weekend but come on you don't need to go in and out <laughs> in and out in and out all night long microphone oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's been watching too much Deadpool. Possibly. Anyways, uh, yeah, we got a great show here today. And uh, Izzy, how are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I played a lot of stuff this week, but a lot of it I'm going to leave off <laughs> what we've been playing. Because <laughs> it's just stuff I've been playing for the last few weeks. So mm -hmm. really no need to dive into that. But uh, I got some new stuff that I've been playing too, so... Oh, sweet. It's been a good week. I, I still haven't got my top five video done. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So it's... we're expecting it about March now, I assume? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right right around the time uh, The Last Guardian finally releases. hey -o. But uh, <laughs> I guess speaking of games we've been playing, we could dive into that section. Indeed. So yeah, let's uh, kick off with how we kick off every show. And I really don't have much this week. Before we started recording, I played a little bit of uh, Smash on the Wii U, uh, tested out Bayonetta, I finally bought her in Cloud, and she, I have to say, she's pretty damn badass, and I'm glad I voted for her. <laughs> I didn't vote for anybody, if I don't think. Maybe maybe Randy Orton. <laughs> <laughs> or Juan like... Cena? I I think I I voted for like the Randy Orton one that they did like a, a really long time ago, but uh, <laughs> yeah, she plays fantastic in uh mm -hmm. in Smash Bros. Yeah. Other other than that, I started up Digimon last night and got through the intro mm. sequence and saved it as soon as I could. So I really haven't experienced any gameplay yet. Mm. Um, you got that on the Vita? On the Vita. Okay. Okay. Cue a picture of Geo Corsi there on the screen. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, the only game I've really played since our last recording was Firewatch, which uh, I'm hoping to get some footage done for this podcast, so maybe that's what people are watching right now, mm -hmm. and it could be something completely different by the time this goes up. Uh, but man, Firewatch was great, like we've experienced a lot of walking simulators and well we ranted about one last year everybody's gone yeah. to the rapture which really didn't live up to its potential but man i i really dug firewatch um the story was good uh kind of a weak ending but started off extremely well like it was one of those moments where it's like whoa that that's kind of heavy that's like mm -hmm. the movie up 15 minutes in kind of oh, heavy no. <laughs> sort of not as bad i will say that not as bad or similar in terms but maybe as bad who knows depends on how you take it um the game looks beautiful i played the ps4 version which i've heard a lot of people have had issues with but i never i really mm -hmm. didn't experience any kind of issues the only issue i had was the game stuck on a loading screen at one point for me where I had to back out of the game, go back in, and play through uh, the previous day in order to, again, but it was a short mm -hmm. one, so it didn't really matter much to me, but that was the only issue I had. Other than that, God, the game ran good for me, and like I said, it's beautiful, the story was good, but the thing that makes this game is the dialogue. 
The dialogue and the voice acting are like phenomenal. It is so well done, so well written. The characters are very likable. They're funny, mm -hmm. they're sarcastic, they're serious when they need to be. Overall, it's it's really, really good and at a price of 20 bucks, well worth it. And it is a mm -hmm. quote unquote walking simulator where, you know, you do walk around a lot, but there's <laughs> a lot to look at. There's a it's a fairly large map to look around. I believe Polygon said it was the size of the original Grand Theft Auto three the map is, so Oh really? You've got a decent bit of like landmass you you can walk around, so Mm -hmm. Yeah, highly recommend it. Loved it. And uh, the first like really big game I think I've played this year. I've played a bit of a Hy Mega Dimension yeah. Neptunia, but I haven't gotten into that far enough yet. But, man, Firewatch. Lord yeah. X approved. <laughs> That's good. Um, kind of wish I would have won the, with that game <laughs> <laughs> instead of the one that I'm going to talk about, which it isn't bad. Um but I had kind of like a strange reaction to, which which I talked to you about uh, last yeah. night, if I believe so. Yep. Um, and that is Unravel. I, I got it on PS4. I had pre-ordered it a while ago whenever it went up for pre-order. Um, this is, of course, the game where you play as Yarny, the game that last year's E3 everybody was raving about <laughs> how yeah. cute the character was and how unique it looked. Mm -hmm. um, and it definitely is unique. Uh, but in a way, it kind of reminds me of uh, Little Big Planet in terms of like the controls are a little floaty, but you have the whole yarn yeah. mechanic in the game, um, where you could swing around and then move different objects and um, kind of a puzzle platformer in, in that sense that you have to move platforms around and stuff and objects so you could get through the world. But uh, the reaction that I had to this was because uh, the game starts out um, and you see an older lady and she's like looking at different things in her home and then she puts down like a photo album and then eventually you go to the photo album and you start opening it and like there's photos there but you can't see them clearly so the whole point of it is every level you access new photos once you complete it mm -hmm. so to me i kind of i don't know if that's the direction they're going it kind of made me think maybe the lady has like lost her memories somehow i don't know if she has like alzheimer's or something like that but there are a okay. bunch of photos and uh it looks like um you remember the developer when he was showing this game he was like really nervous he was like yeah. talking about yeah, how yeah. personal this game is i think it definitely is it's it's kind of structured in a way of these are like his memories of spending his summers with like his grandparents and that kind of hit me personally because my grandparents are like older now and unfortunately they're they're starting to deteriorate and they can't do as much as they could you know back in the day and i used to go to puerto rico and spend my summers with them so it kind of hit me hard from that um mindset it kind of made me depressed to be honest uh, mm -hmm. but that's life everybody gets older and you know we all eventually pass away yep but uh it hit me like that so it, it like i played the first two levels and i it, it kind of got me depressed so I, I i stopped playing it and i i haven't played it since <laughs> Uh, there's 12 levels, if I'm correct by the way I was counting, how many photos are you access through each level and how the, the, what do you call that, the photo album is structured. I counted it, and it seems there's 12 levels. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how the story concludes or ends, but I thought they were going in that direction. But And I could definitely see why this was such a personal game for him if these are, in in a way, his memories of growing up as a child in the countryside i can't remember exactly which country uh he was from i know it's somewhere in europe because mm -hmm. um, you could tell by the the landscapes and stuff but uh yeah i i don't know it kind of had a weird reaction to this it kind of got me depressed I, I don't know if i'm gonna go back to it and this isn't something that's inherent to the game this is just something that i picked up because i went into this game i guess with these emotions that kind of sparked up by yeah. playing the game if, if that makes any sense it's not like you play the game and you get depressed or there there is some like maybe a little bit of emotion and then the soundtrack how they how they use that and stuff like that but it, it's more like cute than anything else but it just had that, that effect <laughs> on me for whatever reason 
So yeah, I'll, I'll kick it over to you so you could discuss anything else if you have anything else that you've been playing this week. Yeah, I really don't. I I tested out Nova One 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 on the Vita, mm. one of the free PlayStation Plus games this uh, month. It was all right. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of like a grid-based game where you're moving a ship around, but when you move, enemies can move at the same time, so you got to strategize that way. It was interesting, but really didn't hold my attention for very long. I tested it out and then proceeded to delete it off my system. Wow. (laughs) Well, I I know you'll be playing Borderlands if... I don't know if you bought it already or not, but... Not yet, no. The uh, file Mm. size is a little bit too big right now. I don't have enough space. (laughs) Okay, to fit it in your memory card, yeah. Yeah, at first I downloaded it, and it was like a, a few hundred megabytes. I'm like, that's it? And then, like, all the DLC started popping up. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So I just left it overnight, like, yep. downloading it. But, uh, yeah, let me get into the the second game that I've been playing, the, the last one for this week. And uh, that is Deadpool um, yeah! on the PC. I picked it up on the, the Steam Lunar Sale, mm-hmm. um, definitely, because Deadpool just came out in theaters. I was kind of in the mood to play hack and slash game, and uh, I'm I'm happy I picked this up. I'm uh, around an hour mark for this, so basically I did the intro section where you're in Deadpool's apartment, <laughs> and you go go around in full with different items. You go to like the bathroom and the kitchen and his bedroom and his living room. I, I won't spoil what actually happens if if people haven't played it, but it's pretty damn funny. Before you start like the proper game, go around and try to like interact with the different elements because it, 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 some funny stuff happens. Mm-hmm. But uh and yeah, after that you go into like the first like few missions of the game. Um and it reminds me of a combination of uh like X-Men Origins Wolverine, which I really love that game. Like that back was when it a came damn out, good game. Like I, I played the crap out of that. Like I, I still think that game is probably better than this one, as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's just hindsight and nostalgia. Even if that game, it's not really nos- Well, it's when that game come out, like two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Like it was uh, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe it is nostalgia, but uh. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of, of X Men uh, Wolverine, you know, X Men Origins Wolverine, which I, I really enjoyed. Because Deadpool has, like, a healing factor in this, too, like Wolverine mm-hmm. does in that game. But what's strange, though, is that his, his suit heals up, too. Yeah. Which is, is kind of weird, because in, in the Wolverine game, like, your clothes would get damaged and they would, like, stay damaged throughout the level. But this, like, he'll get damaged and then he'll regenerate and then his suit regenerates. It's kind of <laughs> weird. But uh, everything else about the game, like, in, in terms of the presentation, the voice acting by uh, Nolan North is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just very Deadpool. Like, it's over the top. It's corny. Uh, it's hack and slash, but there's also shooting. So I I know people made a big fuss about Devil's Third, about how that game was, you know, both (laughs) a, a, you know, like, has sword combat and shooting, and this game does too, but (laughs) nobody really made a big deal about it, Yeah, I guess. But it it works really well how you can switch between, like, uh, using, you know, like a pistol or a shotgun and then going back to, um, you know, like, your your sword. And it it works really well. Um, It's definitely a game that's repetitive, and it's. it's, Oh yeah. You could see that that High Moon definitely had like a low budget for this, but I I think they try to do the best that they could with what they could at the time. I'd I'd be interested to see if this game had never happened, you know, back then when there wasn't a Deadpool movie out in the in the world that was breaking records. Maybe in the future we get a Deadpool game that's more fully fleshed out. Mm -hmm. Felt like this was kind of a one of those games that they had a you know a limited budget and a short time um to really put it out because i remember for some time it went out of print and then like activision re-released it you know moving into this movie yeah so i don't know if their license was about to expire or something but high moon did the transformers like cybertron games and those were excellent like Mm -hmm. those were definitely better than this as a whole in terms of the gameplay and all that but i'm having fun i paid 20 bucks for it I am probably have, like, you know, probably, like, five more hours to go, and mm-hmm. I'm having fun with it. It's just, like, one of those games that I can boot up, and it's a mindless, just beat the crap out of stuff game, and yep. upgrade your your different combat moves, and upgrade your weapons, and your health, and all that stuff, so 
It's like the perfect game at the perfect time. So I could just disconnect and just beat up stuff with uh, Nola North in the background, you know, seeing some <laughs> hilarious things. Yep. Awesome, man. That's uh, that's pretty great. Yeah, I-, I love that game so much. I thought it was excellent. Mm-hmm. And I'll probably pick up the PS4 version at some point down the road when it gets cheaper. Yeah, I, I always wanted to play it. Like, I think at some point I had it on 360, but I never played it. Mm-hmm. But, uh... Since the lunar sale was going on, and they had it for twenty bucks, and pretty much everywhere, like even stores still have it for like forty bucks. Yeah, yeah, so it's a like, hard to get game nowadays. Uh, I think I was like, okay, I'll, I'll just play it on a PC if anything, <laughs> and it runs well too. Like I'm run running it at like <laughs> what was the thing it said in the menu? It said like extra something or you know something yeah, yeah. corny. It said in the menu it was it was funny for the for the <laughs> graphical setting. So uh, I haven't had really any issues really in terms mm-hmm. of like frame rate drops or anything. Like the video compression isn't very good uh, yeah. on the PC version at least, but uh, it didn't really bother me. But everything else is working well. If anybody was wondering, like the PC version is <laughs> pretty good. Awesome, awesome. And speaking of PC versions, why don't we dive into the news <laughs> for this week? Now, uh, that's what you call a segue. Oh, yeah. Oh, you bet your ass that's a segue. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, Izzy, why don't you tell the folks what's coming to PC? So, uh, I, I'm not surprised about this. I, Me I know neither. People are, people are losing their minds. Jeez. But uh, Quantum Break, which is uh, Remedy's latest title. Of course, Remedy known for Max Payne 1 and 2, uh, Alan Wake... Yeah. This at one point was a Xbox One exclusive, not mm-hmm. only console exclusive, but just exclusive in general. Mm-hmm. Now it's coming to PC on Windows 10. But what's cool though, which has really gotten, you know, outshadowed by all these people yelling at Phil Spencer on Twitter. Mm-hmm. You, you saw that, right? Oh that yeah. Crazy. Oh yeah. I saw the meltdown. Oh man. Good for but, him uh, for replying back at some people. Yeah, and I, I, if people saw me on Twitter, I was cracking jokes. I wasn't being serious. I was going to sell my Xbox one. I was just, like, making fun of, like, people losing their minds about this. But what's cool, though, if you pre-order the digital version on the Xbox store, either the website or the Xbox one itself, you get the Windows 10 version for free. Completely yeah. free. You also get the pre-order bonus of... Uh, the Alan Wake side mm-hmm. game, I forgot what's the name of it, American oh, Nightmare. That's it, yep. Um which, which is cool. I pre-ordered the game, and it showed up right on my uh, backwards compatibility list, so that works on your Xbox One now. Cool. Uh, which is the Xbox 360 version, of course. They're also going to be releasing a bundle with Quantum Break that brings Alan Wake um, and a digital copy of Quantum uh, quantum break of course (laughs) 500 gigabyte unit it's going to be 349 it drops i believe a week before the game releases so you could preload it they did this with halo also last year which i thought was cool so you get the console home preload it have it ready to go um i'm excited about this game i pre-ordered it as soon as this went up on the xbox store online Mm -hmm. um and like I said, I got the Alan Wake game. I, I don't remember. <laughs> I probably had it already, so it probably just showed up in my backwards compatibility thing. Um, I believe I had bought it at some point, the side game on uh, Xbox Live. But it's cool, like, cool bundle. It's going to be a white system, which we've seen. It's not really unique because we've seen it with Sunset Overdrive previously, and it doesn't have any, like, special uh, decals for Quantum Break or anything. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of strange they didn't do that, but maybe they just want plain looking console. Yeah. But it's cool. Uh, I guess we could dive into the the backlash because everybody's losing their minds and it's coming to BC. But I know what we've talked about off air is that just looking at the minimum specs that you need to have to play Quantum Break on PC, it might as well just be an Xbox One console exclusive because you need a pretty pretty good rig to run this. Mm -hmm. Um. Like, <laughs> you're not going to get, like, a budget PC to run this. That's not happening. So, no, 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 and, no, no, And no. to be honest, I, I think we're kind of in a bubble because 
and and I'm gonna talk about PlayStation in a second because mm-hmm. I I know a lot of people they give Microsoft crap but they don't give PlayStation but I'll get to that in a second but how many people are realistically your average day consumer are gonna buy like you know a fifteen hundred dollar you know PC to run Quantum Break yeah when they could just buy the three forty nine dollar Xbox One bundle and just you know get a very a very good experience out mm-hmm. of it right right it, it's just like we're in this bubble and they think because it's coming to pc it's gonna hurt the xbox one yeah the but people who are gonna play it on xbox one are, are still probably gonna play it on xbox one like i am yeah uh, the, the pc master race people that they'll, they'll have it on pc hey yeah. now you can play it now you don't have to get an xbox one so yeah exactly um, you don't have the bitch now <laughs> yeah it's like and and <laughs> And now get into Sony, like, they have console-exclusive stuff that people aren't losing their minds about. Like, Street Fighter V drops next week. That's mm-hmm. console-exclusive to PS4, but it's coming out on PC also, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Helldivers well, yep. came to PC. Um, what was the other one? Shenmue Three is coming to PC. Mm-hmm. So, sure, it isn't like they're bringing Uncharted to PC. Yeah. Well, I think like the one of the big reasons that people got really upset was the fact that they didn't announce it until now. Like yeah. they kept it basically covered up for the longest time. Yeah, uh, that's one of the reasons. And just to play devil's advocate here, I I kind of agree with this, but I kind of don't at the same time. Where some people made the argument that. You know, if it was exclusive, it would be better optimized for the one system that is coming on, and that's true. Yeah. That's very much that is true. true. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, more people get to play it now. Yeah. More revenue gets to come in for the developers. I mean, look Especially at Especially for Remedy. Yeah. Right. Like Alan Wake sold probably over a million copies, but it wasn't a runaway success. No, not at all. That eventually came to PC anyway, and they got money from that. Yeah. Uh, and I mean. It just means there's more opportunities for more people to play it. Uh, I'll give an example of two PlayStation franchises that's coming to PC now uh, this month. Mm-hmm. One, oh, yeah. Danganronpa. Danganronpa. Mm-hmm. Is it sad that the Vita lost an exclusive? Yes, it very much is. But on the plus side, now that it's coming to PC, so many more people will get the chance to play this awesome game. And mm-hmm. there'll be more revenue coming in for the developers. And, you know, they can make the next one even that much better. Yeah. And the other franchise is uh, Disgaea. Yeah. The very first game is now coming to PC this month. Again, fucking awesome. Like, that is a game that will work extremely well on the PC being a strategy mm-hmm. RPG. So, yeah, I mean, you can get your knickers in a knot about, oh, it's losing exclusive. Why bother buy an Xbox One? Yada, 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 yada. But at the end of the day, this works out well for everybody. Exclusives yeah. are not... I mean, it's a great thing for the people who own the mm. systems. Or, I mean, yeah. make the systems like Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo. Great thing. Awesome for them. People will have to buy their system in order to play the exclusive. Mm-hmm. But this works out better for all the players and especially the developers of the games themselves. So yeah, yeah, and they said that they were gonna start this initiative. Like they said mm-hmm. it last year that a lot of their games are gonna be coming to PC. Like the new Fables coming to PC, Sea of Thieves by Rare is coming to PC. Um, what was the other one that was coming this year? Halo- Halo, yeah, Gears Ultimate Edition, which was the re-release that's coming to PC. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if all those other games eventually hit PC too, like Gears yeah. of War 4 and ReCore, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you got to remember, this is this is Microsoft. Like they they got the PC platform also. Like, it's, <laughs> exactly. It's Windows. But I I could understand inside with some people that they're like, oh, Quantum Break was a reason to own an Xbox One. Like eh. maybe you could compare compare that to like oh. Uncharted is a reason to own a PlayStation, which is a damn true story. Mm-hmm. And if Uncharted ever came to PC, like that would kind of hurt in a way. But yep. 
what kind of high-end PC would you need to play yeah. Uncharted at the same time? And optimization and all that, like we were talking about. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm still happy. I, I pre-ordered the game. I'm excited for it. Uh, it's been a long time since I've played a Remedy game. The last one was uh, Alan Wake. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. I'm excited that they get to bring it to more people. Yep. Uh, maybe that's why they, they kept this you know, behind closed doors because they wanted to make sure that they could actually get it, yeah. one working. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why the game was delayed too, to have it yeah. come out at the same time because this game was supposed to come out uh, last year, mm-hmm. um, if I believe so. But yeah, let's let's move on from uh from this story. <laughs> yes, let's move into the second story, which um, excuse me, I had to put onto this list here because, uh, well, I, yes. I think we're the only two people in the world that actually enjoyed the first game. Yep. Uh, Knack Two has been listed on an XPEC developer resume. That's right, folks. We could be getting Knack Two in the very near future. Wouldn't that be awesome? Knack 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, personally, I-, I love to see this happen. Um, the article here on Gamitsu reads, Mindy Lang, a 3D animator for XPEC Entertainment, has listed a Knack 2 on her LinkedIn resume. According to the listing, she started work on Knack 2 in May 2015, working on animated 3D character motions and cutscenes for PlayStation 4 system. In addition to having developed its own titles, XPEC Entertainment also is also an outsourced developer working on certain aspects of Final Fantasy XV. If NAC2 is actually a thing, this may or may not be the case. The listing has since been removed, but can still be caught in a Google search. So, yay, Knack 2, please be a reality. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting if this was something that they worked on and they eventually canned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that could be the case. That could yeah. be a possibility uh, also. They couldn't really but, knack uh, out how to make it. <laughs> this game got knacked the fuck out. <laughs> as one of the, the memes that are here in the comments section. Oh, man, this is making me laugh so hard. It's like a UFC fight, and they got Knack versus Mario. <laughs> they couldn't oh put all God. the knickknacks together in order to make it to work. Jesus. But, yeah, like you said, I, I enjoyed Knack. Uh, it was underwhelming, but I enjoyed yeah. it. Uh, I wish there was more there. Like, all it... When it well, I'm not going to say all it needed, but it definitely needed some sort of upgrade system like God of War has. Mm-hmm. So you have some sense of progression. Like, it really didn't have that in the game. Yeah. So maybe you get more moves, more, you know, like upgrade your skills and all that mm-hmm. i enjoyed it i played it through co-op with my little brother and we had a good time uh it was like the story was cheesy and like <laughs> some of, like knock and like the guy's like huge voice and yeah. then he shrinks and the voice changes <laughs> it it had some good ideas in it it definitely was a launch title though like it definitely was rushed it looked gorgeous i really like the special effects uh like you know when mm-hmm. when knack would like you know, yeah. become very large, and then he would shrink down, or he would just break into pieces. Like whenever you lost, there was a com- cool stuff going on. So mm-hmm. I'd hope they they you know reboot this and then create a a great game and then just shut people up. Or, yeah, because <laughs> there's people around that hate Knack. Jesus. Oh my God! Yeah, so much hate for this game. Uh people, what did you expect from a launch title? Be serious. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I beat this, but I never beat Killzone Shadowfall. Like, Same here, actually. <laughs> like, I started Killzone, and I was like, oh, this is weak. Yeah. Like, this is boring and depressing. Mm-hmm. Let's play some Knack. <laughs> and still to this day, I haven't gone back to Killzone, but I finished Knack. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. But yeah. I'm also, like, biased because I like 3D platformers. <laughs> we don't have many of those. So. No, no. That was I nice... hope this is a thing. I really do hope this is a thing. Mm-hmm. Just to see the outcry of like oh people just god. flipping out and like, be like, oh my god, who asked for Knack 2? <laughs> Nobody did. It's like, we did. I yep. want a knack. I want this to be the Uncharted 2 <laughs> of, of the Knack franchise. Imagine that. It just does like a huge graphical leap. and the, then The Uncharted of platformers. Oh my god. Uncharted 2. Anyway, let, let's move on yes. to the last, well, the last yeah, story before last we get into story. the uh, the All random right. announcements. Yep. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, speaking of 
having a knack for things. What did uh, Square oh Enix do? This guy is. is he... you're, you're keeping uh, Daniel Kaiser's spirit alive. You're goddamn uh, right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Final Fantasy IX is out now on iOS and Android. It kind of dropped. You know, out of nowhere, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, right? It, it wasn't. Yeah, nobody knew it was coming. I mean, they released the PC version in Japan, I believe. Mm -hmm. But then we're like, here you go. It's on iOS and Android now here in the United States and Canada. Enjoy. Yep. And it, it'll be coming to Steam soon, eventually. Yep. And I'm sure there's going to be some sort of PlayStation version. Mm -hmm. um, God. I like how they did. Oh, give me. Have they released 8 on Steam? 8 is on Steam, yes. It okay, had a so. PC version back in the day, so. Okay, so it's not like a, a quote unquote you, remaster or no, you know high high def version. Yeah. Out of the uh, PS One games, seven, eight, and nine, seven mm. and eight did have PC versions. Nine was the only one that never did. So. Oh okay. When they announced this, it was really surprising, and the fact that they just stealth launched this out on iOS and Android is incredible. And mm. even though the prices are outrageous, go buy it, people, because it is the greatest game of all time. I'm not yeah, buy, biased. Buy, <laughs> buy it on <laughs> buy it on Steam when it comes out. Or just buy the PlayStation Classic. It's sure as hell you don't want to play this on a touch screen. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just, I, just I, buy it to support it. That's all I'm I, saying. I wonder if like they re remap the controls or... Mm. Probably not. This is a probably cheap port. Uh, they do like those digital controls that are on the screen. I hate those. Yeah, yeah. Why do people too. play on tablets like games that I could see like real time strategy games, but like mm -hmm. anything else, like yeah, I, I really can't. It's, see it's just doing a either. terrible experience. Yep. But anyways, yeah, Final Fantasy IX, fucking awesome, and hopefully we do get a PS4 version. That that's all I want. Square, you've mm -hmm. been so good to mm -hmm. me this past year. Please just do this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, they've been doing they've been good. doing god's work the last year <laughs> <laughs> kevin smith's in the building um, <laughs> so yeah uh lord x um why don't you tell us all these bunch of games that are coming out all right yeah it's time to steal a uh, ps i love you xoxo's uh segment once again the last thing they do on the roper report um you mean roper's report Singular <laughs> possessive news. Um, yes, we have our random PS4 and Vita release announcement rundown. Uh, I sh probably should have looked through IGN as well for stuff on other platforms, but it was easy. <laughs> I just, just thought that too. It, <laughs> I was like, it, it was, this is not biased. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was quick and easy to do just to go to the PlayStation blog literally just before we started recording to do this. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, random stuff that got announced. Shiren the Warrior launches July 26th on the PlayStation Vita. Uh, looks like your classic JRPG style type of game, like Super Nintendo 16-bit uh, style. Screen hmm. Cheat launches March 1st on PlayStation 4. Releasing on the first Tuesday of a month, you might be a PlayStation Plus game. Uh... That game is really interesting. Uh, you have I haven't to, seen anything on it. The thing with that game is it's a four-player shooter, you know, kind of like GoldenEye. Oh, I can but, see where the concept... Yeah, like yeah. you got to look at your... You've got to look opponent. at your opponent's screen. Huh. Uh, because when you're wandering around the map and you're just looking at your own viewpoint, everybody mm -hmm. else is invisible. You have to look at your opponent's oh. screen to see where they are so that you can kill them that way. That's an interesting concept. Yeah, it's uh, it's really clever. Uh, Blastem Bunnies launches Brr. March 8th <laughs> on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. I didn't even bother to look up what this was. Um, it's probably a shooter. Shoot them up. Yeah. Post-apocalyptic survival game Sheltered is heading... Heading to PlayStation 4. Looks kind of interesting. Dungeons 2 brings evil doing to PlayStation 4 on April 26th. My dreams have been answered as Sword, Co Sword Coast Legends brings D&D &D Adventures to PlayStation 4 this spring. And hmm. why I say that is 
a couple of episodes ago when we were talking about what PS2 games we want to see on PlayStation 4. Remember how I mentioned Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance? Yeah. Well, this is a D&D game set in the Forgotten Realms universe, like those games were, in this oh. similar kind of style. Like, there are Diablo-esque type gameplay. And as an extra bonus, if you buy the game, you get the DLC for free later on, and that mm. DLC includes Drizzt, who I mentioned on that episode oh. as well, including his, I believe, 400-pound panther mount that comes with him so that's cool yeah i'm very excited for this game and it will be a day one purchase regardless of what else is coming out at that time um next up knights and bikes confirmed for playstation 4 i assume it includes knights and or bikes party herd is launching on playstation 4 this spring uh, I've played the PC version of that game. I did a Let's Experience onto it, I believe. Very good. And uh, I believe a past podcast episode, I actually played footage of it as well. Really good game. Uh, highly recommended. And Brain Bending Shooter in Versus is coming to PlayStation 4. So there you go, folks. There's your random PS4 Vita release announcement rundown. Hopefully next time if we do this, we will include other stuff as well. Yep. Sh- sh- Shakedown my uh Shakedown Hawaii is coming to uh, the 3DS. I saw that one. <laughs> the sequel to I can't Retro. Can't think of any other release releases for Nintendo cuz they, <laughs> they don't got nothing <laughs> until they announce the NX. X will give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of DMX, I think I think where was it? I I read somewhere that they found him like unconscious in like his hotel room or something like that. Like Jesus. he was almost dead. Holy like a crap. cop brought him back to life or something. He's like been addicted to drugs for like ever now. So it's one of these days we're gonna read a story. It's gonna be like DMX uh, found dead of overdose or something. Yeah, it's so sad. Or found X'd out something like that. Oh, oh, <laughs> that that was bad. I'm sorry, <laughs> folks. Uh, let, let's move into a sad topic. All the same, it is time for our topic of the week. And wow, um. I thought we were done with the saying goodbye to things after, you know, the Outlaw yeah. Gamer radio podcast ended, which, uh, speaking of that, it took one week and they were back with another Outlaw, podcast. Outlaw is uh, till the end now. <laughs> yep, which is um, awesome. Go watch it, or listen to yeah. it. It's crazy. Like, the the first, like, month of this year has been kind of depressing. Yeah, Because, no of kidding. course, they had, you know, the death of, of Lemmy late December. Mm-hmm. I think was that on no my that was January that was I that think was so, January yeah. yeah jeez I thought that was I don't know it was towards the beginning of the year yeah, of yeah. course the death of David Bowie mm-hmm. uh, the uh, the uh, was it the lead singer for the Eagles yep that also passed away yes yeah, so many uh, and then Outlaw Gamer and then mm-hmm. yeah this and this, this happened one. the same day as Daniel Bryan's retirement for wrestling yep. fans like. Mm-hmm. Wow, what a day! Yeah. Like I just had to go to sleep. I couldn't even watch like Daniel Bryan. Like I, I, I was like, no, this is too yeah. much for today. But, the, uh, this, this was a day of the, that little meme: lie down, try not to cry, cry a lot. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, Game Trailers has uh, closed its doors as mm-hmm. of Monday yep. uh, of last week after um, thirteen years. That's it's crazy. Yep. Um, of course, there, there's been so many different versions of the site over the mm-hmm. year. They've they've gone yep. from being something very small to something very that big, was massive, and then uh, back to being you know, very small again. Has you know started to wither off the last few years, and mm-hmm. it's it's just really depressing. Like it hit me really hard because I had just started to get back into game trailers recently. Mm-hmm. Like um, Same I. Here, yeah. I started watching game trailers probably in 2006, 2007, when um, I was in high school, mm-hmm. um, and then it was around the same time, you know, when I found like Screw Attack and the Angry Video Game Nerd. So I always relate to two, yeah. because uh, game trailers, of course, had the partnership with uh, with Screw Attack, and they Screw Attack would do their 
their top tens on there. They would do their video game vaults. They would do the angry video mm-hmm. game nerd. Later yep. on, they did stuff like uh, talking classics mm-hmm. with uh, Keith Apicary. So, yep. and those are just screw attack shows. Not yeah. even mentioning the actual proper game trailer shows, but yep. uh, yeah, started it's, watching uh, them. Yeah, it's thanks to game trailers that so many people got their start in like the online world of talking about mm-hmm. video games. It's crazy, but. Uh, as uh, Stuttering Craig mentioned on Colin and Greg Live there this past week, game trailers was essentially like the first YouTube sort of deal where people got their start from and branched off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they had their user-generated content too. Like, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people posted their stuff on there. Like, I was talking to like a buddy of mine. I think he mentioned probably at some point like gaming his historian had some stuff on there probably and mm-hmm. early on um but it's just crazy like uh what i i think i was talking about was like how you know i started watching them and then like i kept watching them and probably somewhere around 2012 13 like i think it was around the time that like shane left mm-hmm. i i kind of stopped watching them and then i started again when like they had the new guys coming in like cal bossman and mm-hmm. then i kind of stopped after that and it wasn't really until like this past year's e3 with their reaction videos for like the final fantasy 7 yeah. and uh shenmue 3 announcements that i really started you know paying attention to them more mm-hmm. um, the, and the last few months i've been really enjoying watching gt time uh watching their top tens again which i mm-hmm. i've always really yep. enjoyed um because they they kind of shrunk down like all the other shows that they used to do they don't do anymore well Mm -hmm. they didn't do anymore like and you know shane talked about that like stuff like bonus round like it was very expensive to produce yeah and and they could do that when when they had you know the budget for it but uh yeah i just kind of want to run down a list of of stuff in my head of like shows that they did which like I already mentioned, the Screw Attack stuff, like the Angry Video Game Rave, that was huge. Yep. The Screw Attack top tens, uh, talking classics, video game vaults. Uh, then they had their own stuff like GT Countdown, which uh, Rich Brown would narrate. Mm-hmm. Then they had the regular GT top tens. They would have their reviews, which I always really enjoyed. Yeah. Because uh, the majority of them were narrated by uh, Brandon Jones, so they had kind of a sense of a uh, consistency. Whereas, like, if you would go to IGN, uh, you would hear like Greg Miller or Colin Moriarty if they re- reviewed a game and they would do the voiceovers, mm-hmm. which is kind of kind of weird. Um, I liked it because it was them, but. Yep. You know what, what I mean. It's There was mm-hmm. kind of a consistency to game trailers. Yep. Um, and uh, just uh, on the topic of reviews there, which, uh, you know, I never really thought of before, but Shane mm-hmm. brought it up on the episode of Game Face where he talked about game trailers. Yeah. Never once did they use the word I in a review. It was always we. Like, mm-hmm. it was a consensus. or Or nothing at all, yeah. Yeah. Or they wouldn't yeah. even mention it. Like, it was kind of their, their, their uh, I guess... Not necessarily a mandate but kind of their philosophy at the time mm-hmm. when he was heading them up and stuff like the retrospective like those were incredible like just going through all these games and giving you the details whenever a new game would be released in that franchise yep the timeline ones were super in depth i know they oh only did God. a few like they did kingdom hearts and i was still lost <laughs> but uh stuff like pop fiction was really cool oh my god i love uh, that show so much invisible walls was fantastic i really enjoyed that show i like i would wake up saturday mornings like in in college mm-hmm. and that would be like my routine <laughs> to wake up on saturday mornings i'd wake up i'd grab some cereal turn on game trailers and watch invisible walls Mm -hmm. uh, on saturday mornings and then some of their later shows like pack attack with michael pactor even if you didn't necessarily agree with the guy like he was a charming guy and it was an entertaining show uh they had annoyed gamer with marcus beer which was freaking hilarious it it was like you know like what jim sterling does with jim quisition Mm -hmm. but marcus beer's version pretty much yep um they, they just had so much content on their website and i didn't even mention the epic battle cry yeah. like that this is how i found those guys like yep, just same. browsing through their feed one day like 
I had already, like, I've mentioned this before, I was already watching, like, side-scrollers from Screw Attack and listening to their stuff. Well, listening to at the time is before they did the video version. Mm -hmm. And then I found, like, Invisible Walls, and I found, like, Epic Battle Cry and started watching them. Yep. I just remember <laughs> all, all the photoshopped images and always at the oh, beginning yeah. they would have they'll be like in a freaking cave or a volcano or whatever the <laughs> yeah. hell is going on and, and they would photoshop tony grice on some some lady's body or some shit like some crazy stuff but that's how i found those guys and of yeah. course led me to go over to epic battle axe at the time and now of mm -hmm. course you know the their uh new iterations with uh outlaw gamers um Mm -hmm. it's crazy like there's like game trailers was special like I, I think I tweeted out I was like I grew up with game trailers I didn't grow up with IGN like mm -hmm. like the reason I started getting into E3 was because of game trailers they were the first people that I would you know go to like because before game trailers I would you know read about E3 online or even back then there were still magazines around so like electronic yep. gaming monthly or game pro i would get those issues like the big e3 specials after e3 happened mm -hmm. that would give you all the rundowns and everything that was coming out in the fall yeah but it was really game trailers that made me like watch this stuff like you know and analyze it like the e3 and really get even more into the industry in, in, in terms of that in terms of the press conferences at least mm -hmm. um it, it's just crazy that that it's not a thing anymore and then watching you know we we've re referenced it a few times but uh, shane satterfield has a sifted now yep. um sifted uh is it sifted or sifted games uh sifted.net i yeah. believe it's yeah it's is the website but uh it's you know what what he's done after game trails after leaving i, I believe he said he left in 2013 Mm -hmm. um after things went went south in, in in terms of all the issues that they were having behind the scenes with viacom and yep. issues with ad blocker and you know um all these you know corporate things that happened to the company but uh mm -hmm. yeah it, uh, by all means folks do look go look up that episode of game face it will explain yeah. a lot and mm -hmm. well Maybe you'll be like me and actually feel bad about the whole Jeff Keighley with the Mountain Dew and Doritos thing because that was explained. He yeah. basically did that because, you know, so that could ease up on the actual ads that were playing on the website. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I, I don't want to dive too much into that because I know Shane goes over it yeah. much more eloquently and in detail than we could ever do Indeed, here. But, yeah. but it's just a shame to see how this site that mm -hmm. was once, like... The one of the, yeah, one of the the go to places when I would log in, it would be like screw attack and like game trailers when I would mm -hmm. go online and it's just sad and, and the way it happened too, like I yeah. saw Brandon Jones tweet, like I believe this this happened like I, I think I was either starting to watch Raw at the time, mm -hmm. like wrestling. Yeah. And I saw that tweet, and it just got... I was like, what? And then after that, you saw, like, all the guys starting to tweet, like... Huber started to tweet, like... And, and then Ian Hanks started to tweet, like, mm -hmm. the, this stuff is true. Yeah. And then Bloodworth is on his honeymoon. Poor man. Which is, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, this could tell you how much Defy Media gave... <laughs> you know two craps about any of these people or game trailers as a whole mm -hmm. and this was done like on a monday like it's weird like why didn't you let him like finish out the week mm -hmm. give him a heads up yeah. like even like brandon jones himself did not know anything until yeah, they told him just... like that day like oh yeah by the way we're shutting you down go tell everybody they're fired and it's so. crazy and, and it's depressing because you saw how how they they were like they became very big because they had you know they, they were owned by mtv slash viacom well viacom owned mtv mm -hmm. and they were all part of that that family and how huge and like just watching that episode of game face and when they showed the clips of the office like the big gt offices it just made me depressed because it had all that nice artwork on the side mm -hmm. and like all these cubicles and it was just so much space where you fast forward to now if you've ever seen any of the more recent shows at game trailers and they show stuff of their like 
offices, it's really small. Yeah. Like the cubicles are very small. Like everybody's like crammed in next to each other. Like the fall from grace from game trolls was just like really depressing. And there's some great people over there. Like mm-hmm. we talked about, you know, Mike Huber, e- Ian Hank, Kyle Bossman, Ben mm-hmm. Moore, Brandon Joes. I, I know I'm missing some yeah. uh, of the crew, but Daniel Bloodworth, like there is, it's sad too. Cause I was just like, you know, mm-hmm. watching them again and really getting into like their personalities again and, yeah. and their top tens, which I've always appreciated and have always been like an inspiration to like the mm-hmm. top videos that I do. So, yeah. and I've, I always really enjoyed their reviews. Like, mm-hmm. um, I always, to be honest, I always preferred them over IGN yeah um like i like some of the people over at ign like colin and and greg but uh, it's it's just like really depressing like Mm -hmm. it's it's cliche the end of an era really is because i and i i know i've seen people post online like uh ryan stevens who used to work there of course uh that people are, are trying to archive as much stuff as they can it's like that's depressing mm-hmm. like yeah. like this is a chapter of gaming history that's kind of like it's just done like mm-hmm. it's it, it, like yeah. it, it's and, and, just and weird it's, like yeah and it's not being like sent out gracefully it's basically just being closed like, up and tossed into the fire essentially yeah like, and i went to i've gone to the website every day since and it's just there is no message on the website like Mm-hmm. unfortunately we've closed down blah there's nothing yeah like even the youtube page like nothing like mm-hmm. and it, it's just so depressing how yeah. this happened mm-hmm. and i think what makes it even worse uh, of all the like all the gaming outlets and media that we have ign GameSpot, polygon uh even like rooster teeth screw attack etc etc like there's mm-hmm. a lot of like great sites and they do great work but game trailers essentially was like the last really positive group of people like yeah everything they did was positive and if they had something negative to say they kind of put a funny or positive spin on that as well like if you watch Kyle Bossman like mm-hmm. his uh how Microsoft fucked up or what they can do better videos yeah. like they were positively driven with a positive message even if they were saying something negative which is really really disappointing to see that go away yeah it's like like we talked about earlier like growing up with game trailers like ign i would watch like you know later on like in those periods that i stopped watching game trailers but i really Mm -hmm. It's not like I really grew an affinity for those people over there. Like, I will watch stuff here and there. And then once Greg and Colin left, I left with them pretty much. <laughs> like, I still go to IGN and check news and stuff, but I'm not, mm-hmm. like, into the community yeah, as much as I was when Greg and Colin were there. Now mm-hmm. I'm o- over at the kind of funny stuff. But game trailers, like, I was I was with that. Like, I felt <laughs> a part of it. Like, I remember my brother used to be on that all the time like i remember back when they had like that achievement system that you would like write blogs and stuff and get Mm -hmm. points and you could get things like i wonder where this shirt is but once he like used up a ton of points which took forever to get and he bought me like a game trailer shirt and like Mm -hmm. i I don't know where the shirt is i might have you know like lost it in a move or something but Mm-hmm. it's just like i just remember all those little things and i would go and see his blogs and, and stuff that he would write or like he was like really into the community at the time too because you could get like free stuff he probably got like a free game or two or yeah it's just it's it's really really depressing and and mm-hmm. what shane talked about the video a lot too was ad blocker mm-hmm. which which people use I personally don't use it because I I know the ramifications of using yeah. it. But people they like, like there's this sense on the internet like oh no I'm I'm not gonna pay you for anything like mm-hmm. and and I kind of this is gonna be a complete tangent but I feel like this generation growing up now is gonna become so spoiled and they're gonna not want to pay for anything like. Mm-hmm you could just go on youtube and watch all this stuff and like look at it's a complete tangent but like where the music industry's at 
mm-hmm. like in terms of people they just pirate stuff movie industry luckily it's they still have the movie theaters and they're making killer money with star wars and all these superhero movies but yep it's just like people don't don't want to pay for stuff and like they're, they're so in, entitled like yeah it just annoys me like yeah. we were talking about this like if the guys some of the guys band up and create their own like you know independent thing like i'd support them mm-hmm. like yep. on patreon or whatever the case may be last night we were watching a huber stream mm-hmm. uh, of dying light so yep. it's just really depressing how it went out and it, it just made me think about the video game industry as a whole and how how unpredictable it kind of is yep. um and i mean like seeing game trailers fall it's like i'm i would not be surprised if we started seeing other things like fall as well like mm-hmm. game spot i would mm-hmm. assume would be the weakest like at the end it's probably only going to be like out of the big ones that are left like kind of funny is going to be around because they're doing yeah because they're they're independent yeah they don't have then they don't have that overhead yeah exactly and like stuff like rooster teeth are going to still be around because they got a whole bunch of other stuff that they do but at the end with the big companies like the only one i can see really surviving this is ign yeah because eventually stuff like destructoid and Mm -hmm games radar and you know they're like middle tier sites like Mm -hmm. what what will happen at kotaku i don't know how much overhead they have because of course kotaku is more blog so they don't have to deal with video editing and all that stuff Mm -hmm. and then there's polygon uh, which they're also nobody would miss polygon let's be honest (laughs) nobody would miss polygon I get I give them a set a seven out of ten because it's got too much sexuality, but uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, I I, I wouldn't wish bad. No, on them, no. Like I, I don't want these people and losing their jobs, and that's what I was thinking. You know, the whole like video game industry as a whole, which honestly, like I would love to get into, like, mm-hmm. but seeing stuff like this like deters me completely. Yeah. Because it like it it not only happens to like media sites, mm-hmm. it happens to video game companies and yep. and jobs and you know like how many times do we hear these these companies closing, people mm-hmm. getting fired, people yep. like getting let go? It's, like it's not a safe industry to work in when you yeah, look at it, it that way. That's what I think of it. It's not like something like say you put in a career and you put in ten twenty years and you get something at, at, at the end. You never know. You might just get fired. Like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it kind of hit me hard, like in in so many ways. Oh, that mm-hmm. sounds that sounds sexual, yeah. but yeah. It, it's not. I, I'm yeah. being serious about mm-hmm. it. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, just like wrapping this up here, game trailers they really brought a lot of people together. It was such a groundbreaking website at the time. A lot of people have to be thankful for it that work in the gaming industry right now. Yeah, and just like on a personal level for this own podcast this podcast would probably not exist if not for game trailers because it was for game trailers that introduced me as well to epic battle axe yeah, <laughs> which true. introduced us yeah to so, each other yeah yeah so it's i didn't it, even think of that without That's game crazy. trailers there may not have been a glitched out game we've never podcast. been friends that's crazy yeah geez. i didn't even think of that yeah shit <laughs> that's <laughs> deep man that oh man it's so it's so it's so sad man like yeah. what happened to this company like they were pioneers of a lot of things if you guys mm-hmm. have a chance go read read up what uh brandon jones posted i believe mm-hmm. it was was it on their facebook page or it was somewhere but he was mm-hmm. talking about how how back then um damn it i can't remember where i read it I, it might have been like kotaku or or polygon or something that that linked it um mm-hmm. and one other thing like I, I never saw ign post anything about this yeah i never did either. did you like no. i went through the feed and i'm like they didn't talk about game trailers closing i was like wow that's in bad taste because yeah. kotaku posted about it polygon posted about it anyway that's uh, anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> start cursing at ign <laughs> but uh <laughs> Uh, you can't spell ignorant without IGN. No, I'm just kidding. There's some good people over there. But, um, 
Yeah, where Brandon Jones was talking about, like, when they founded the company, like, the industry was still all print media. Mm-hmm. And, like, they, they pretty much laughed at them, like, this whole yep. concept of, of video game, video media, and then, like, how everything years later has mm-hmm. become a streaming service, like Netflix and all these things. So they were kind of, like, really big pioneers in the technology space yep. in terms of how people consumed media, mm-hmm. uh, especially in gaming. Um, it's it's just crazy like yeah. <laughs> that they're gone i i really hope these guys bounce back and yeah. different companies give mm-hmm. them opportunities mm-hmm. bounce back and i don't know if like screw attack or or anybody else like mm-hmm. any other companies that could hire these guys and do something for them because yeah. they're, they're I, very I, talented guys and it's, it's such a shame mm-hmm. yeah i i really hope they manage to land some jobs with some great mm-hmm. companies who will take yeah. care of them yeah uh, okay well that's uh that's going to do it for our topic of the week this week folks so um please let us know what you think about the fall of game trailers and why your memories of game trailers leave those down in the comment section below and with the comment section down below we do have a few comments from oh, last nice. week the and they're trend. not mine are they <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I keep forgetting them to put them in the notes. Are they mine? I don't, I don't even know. Did I leave a comment? I can't remember. I, I did listen to the show, but no. <laughs> uh, no, no, you did not. Uh, all right, the first comment we got is from Lucius Silver. Nice episode. Ah, fuck, I can't talk. Nice episode, guys. I'm back as promised. Smiley emoticon. I was always con- pretty conservative with games. Uh, our talk last week about do we need to buy anything, so he's commenting on that. Especially since new releases go for 69 euros here in Portugal due to wow. taxes and other crap. I did the conversion rate on that for myself, and that it's equals like to... It's like 100-some bucks. Yeah, about 110 Canadian. So, uh, yeah, I, I really feel his pain because I pay about... Well, I did the conversion about 90 bucks Canadian, which is about 57 euros. So, Damn. yeah. Uh, he said, I wanted to play and reserve titles recommended by folks for Steam sales and bargain bins, at least when game was still a thing here. This year, I'm hoping to play XCOM 2, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, and Uncharted 4. It will be tricky, though, as I have yet to acquire a PS4 and don't own a powerful PC. That's why I keep telling everyone that XCOM 2 is a 600 euros game for me. Ouch. (laughs) Uh, The list is small, yes, but we're still early in the year, and the aforementioned games have all been delayed from last year. We'll see if it expands, so yeah, we don't know what else is coming yet. I mentioned that about the Canadian dollar, and uh, yeah, he mentioned back again, saying that uh, about the minimum wage. But he also said, uh, one thing I forgot to mention that helps migrate this pain is Steam family sharing. To me, this has been a godsend. My friend and I pretty much have the same taste in games, and we usually talk before buying. That way, we don't end up getting the same thing and wind up playing a lot of the titles that we want. That is a very cool idea. And, it's uh, smart, yeah. Yeah, a friend of a uh, friend of mine and a cousin of mine actually do a similar thing with the Xbox One, mm-hmm. where they share titles that way. And <coughs> we got a comment from Aaron B as well, who uh, had to comment in on your talk about Persona Four from last week, where he says mm-hmm. Persona Four has the best music in any game ever. <laughs> I could not agree more. The soundtrack in that game is absolutely it's a, it's badass. It's a really good soundtrack. I kind of want to buy it. I, I just I'm scared I'll I'll get a bootleg copy because <laughs> you know getting one of those soundtracks you never know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they'll put it on vinyl at some point. Oh jeez, I'm done with all these vinyl records. Don't get me into <laughs> rant. It's like every five seconds there's another game getting. Like Pokemon Red and Blue, they're getting a vinyl record. Great. I don't have a player, like a record player. I'm not going to get one. I've, I'm gone digital. Like, you're going backwards. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for uh, leaving some comments. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for listening to the episode as well. That's very awesome. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much going to do it for the uh, podcast this week. Um, so, Izzy, 
please, by all means, get us the hell out of here. All right, so let's see. What did we talk about this week? I kind of went blank for a second. I'm still thinking about game trailers. Yeah, crazy. But uh, yeah, thanks everybody for checking out this episode. Let us know in the comment section down below any of your, your thoughts on any of these news stories that we covered. Uh, Quantum Break coming to PC. Knack 2 might be a thing. Final Fantasy IX hitting iOS and Android. Any of these releases. Uh, your thoughts on the closure of game trailers. Any memories of game trailers any favorite personalities that you liked over the years over there or any favorite shows we'd love to hear that in the comment section down below for lord x i am izzy aka <laughs> i almost forgot my name <laughs> aka zero pacheco 89 and we are up and out oh bringing it back rest in peace game trailers